Hello GED students. Oh my goodness, I had someone working on the multiplying algebraic expressions challenge worksheet and came to number eight and got really lost. Oh my goodness, kind of scary. There's algebra in my geometry. <laughs> so you take a look here. This is what the problem said. It said find the simplified area. Okay, area, I know that word. That's definitely a geometry word of the triangle below. So, well, the good news is anytime someone tells you to find the area of something, you can always consult the GED formula sheet. If you're not sure how to find area, you do get a formula sheet when you're taking your test. So let's go look it up and see what it has to say. So um, I can't navigate over to the formula sheet on this little tablet. Sorry, you guys, you're going to have to do it yourself, but you can pause me. Uh, go um, Google search. Uh, GED formula sheet should be the very first thing that comes up. And what you're going to notice is that the first section of the GED formula sheet is area. And there's a bunch of area formulas. And if you look at area of a triangle, you'll see this. A equals one half shoved up next to a B, shoved up next to an H. So what does that mean? Let's translate this into some plain old English. Uh, one way to think about this is to find the area. See how area is all alone? Right now it's set up to find the area. It's all alone on its side of the equal sign. So to find the area, multiply. Remember when things are shoved together, like that one half, that B and that H are shoved together right now, they are multiplying. So, sorry, spelling is hard. Multiply uh, one half times B times H. Now you might be going, well, what the heck is B and H? Uh, yeah, let's be specific, Kate. What does B mean? Let me erase that B. B stands for base of a triangle which is one of its sides. So you might say, which side? Well, it all depends on the height. The height of a triangle is always at a right angle to the base. So the base is a side, and the height is always at a right angle to that base. Now, it's really nice on this triangle, because take a look at this triangle. See that right angle right there? Ah, because of that lovely right angle, this is the right triangle. The base and the height are just going to make a nice little L around that angle. It's really easy to find the base and the height on a right triangle. Okay, there you go. So we've got a plan. That formula tells us to find the area, multiply one half times the base times the height. And we have that information. We know where the base and the height are. So let's get going. Okay. So again, to find the area, I'm going to take one half and multiply by the base. Well, what's the base? It doesn't really matter which one you call base and which one you call height when it's like this, but I'll call that one the base. So I'll write in 4.2, it, and don't lose your Y. It's okay for there to be algebra in your geometry. We can handle letters, unknowns, okay? So I put the Y there, and now I need to multiply by the height. Well, what's the height? We said it was the other one, so there's another Y. And now you can see it's not geometry anymore. Now it's an algebraic expression to simplify um, we're going to do as much math as we can, and then we'll stop. That's what I mean by simplify. It's kind of like obeying the operation symbols. And it does tell us, even if we didn't realize ourselves we should simplify, these directions are super duper clear. So first of all, you might be wondering, well, how do I multiply together 1 half times 4.2? Now, there's lots of ways, guys. You could pick up your calculator, and you could do 1 half times 4.2 in a TI. You could convert one half to a decimal, 0.5, and then do the multiplication. But I can actually take half of 4.2 in my head because I'm pretty good at halving things. You know, I know that half of 4 is 2 and half of 2 is 1. So really easy to take half of 4.2. I get 2.1. Okay. And now what happens when I multiply with y? Well, the y will just get shoved up on the back side there. So awesome. I just multiplied together 1 half and 4.2y, and I got 2.1y. Ah, but I have one more y to multiply with. And do you guys remember what happens when we have repeated factors? So repeated factors means the same number multiplying, in this case, an unknown number y. Uh, well, we use exponents to simplify them. So I'll leave my 2.1 here, but I don't just have one y multiplying, I have two y's multiplying. I can write that as y squared. I can use exponents to talk about repeated multiplication. 
Now you might be thinking, well now, what do I do now? What am I supposed to do with that Y? Well, there's nothing you can do with this Y. You don't have enough information to solve this to figure out what Y is equal to. All you could do is simplify. This is the simplified area of the triangle below. It's 2.1 Y squared square units. And I'm only saying square units because nobody marked it for me with like centimeters, inches. So I don't know if it's square centimeters, square inches, square yards. So square units is just kind of a generic way of saying it's square some kind of measurements. Okay. And that's literally it. That is the whole problem. We are done. Um, and really, if it were on the GED, you wouldn't even have to type in the square units. This is what you'd have to know. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math problem, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.